Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to make a brush out of anything in Blender. In this example, I'm going to be using a 3D model of a simple skull I made and convert it into an alpha brush so that we can quickly add details to our sculpts like this without needing to recreate the wheel each time. This is a great way to add complex details to your sculpts quickly with just the click of a button, while at the same time making your workflow more efficient and streamlined. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first thing, I did add a backdrop box here to the model. Just a simple box, you may want to do the same. This backdrop will be where our brush will begin, so to speak. Anything black will not be seen in the brush, just the white parts of the skull. If you don't have one already, you're going to want to add in a camera. So shift A and select camera. It's right at the origin for me, so I'm going to press G then Y to constrain the move backwards along the Y axis. Make sure that the flat square of the camera is pointing towards your model. Okay, so let's select our camera and then press zero on the numpad to enter into camera view. Then click over here and change the resolution to something square. I'm gonna make it 2048 by 2048 for a nice high resolution brush. Then click down here in the output section on the BW option to make it a grayscale image. And then click on the 16 to increase the number of shades of gray our brush will have. Now click up here in the passes data section and click on mist. Then down here in the camera properties tab, change the type to orthographic and then adjust the scale so that your model fits nicely in the middle of the camera frame. Now click on the World tab and expand the Mist Pass section. Numpad 0 again to exit out of camera view. Then Numpad 3 for side orthographic view for me. And then I'm going to click on the Measure tool here on the left. Now click on this pointy end of the camera here, and then drag and hold control until your cursor snaps to the point on your model that is closest to the camera. Now enter this number here on the measure line in the start field of the mist pass over on the right. I have a number of about 22.5 meters. I'm gonna round down just a bit to 22.4. Now click on the measure tool again here and drag it to the point on your model farthest away from the camera, right along the flat plane of your backdrop if you have one. Then again, enter this number here on the measure line, this time in the depth field of the mist pass over on the right. Change the fall off to inverse quadratic. Now you can press F12 to render your image. You can close out of the render window now. Now let's go up to the compositing tab here. Click on Use Nodes here and make sure Backdrop is activated over here. Now connect the Mist output up to the Image input like this. Now Shift A, Search and type Viewer to add in a Viewer node. Connect up the mist to the image like this. Now you'll have a preview of the render in the background. To resize it, click up here in the view menu and select fit to available space. To resize the render preview, click on the viewer node here and the image will have a white outline around it. To move the render preview, click on the viewer node again and click on the little X in the middle of the image and you can move it around the background. Okay, now shift A, search and type RGB to add in a RGB curves node. Connect it up like this. Shift A, search and type invert to add in an invert node. Connect it up like this. And finally, shift A, search and type blur to add in a blur node and connect it up like this. Okay, now in the RGB Curves node, you can adjust the RGB curve so that you get a good amount of contrast in your image. The white parts of the image will have height and the black parts will have depth. The more contrast you have in your image, the clearer your brush will be. Now add in a little bit of blur by increasing the X and Y fields of the blur node to whatever works for you. I'm just gonna do a small amount with 10 in each field. It doesn't need to be much. Then press F12 again to render your image. Now go up to the image menu and you can save your image wherever you'd like. 
Okay, so now I'm just gonna jump over to a new file to show how you might use this brush in action. Here I just have a round cube, and I'm gonna add in a multi-resolution modifier and up the subdivisions until I have a few million tries as shown in the bottom right. Now switching over to sculpt mode, I'm gonna click on the texture properties panel and then click new. Now click on the open button here and navigate to where you saved your brush image. Let's now go up to the tool settings panel and I'm gonna make some adjustments here that work for my brush in particular. The parameters I'm gonna be changing here are the ones I find have the biggest impact on how brushes look. I'm gonna start with the strength and increase it to 0.8. Then down to the texture section, I'm gonna change the mapping to area plane. Tiled will have it repeating, which I don't want in this case. Then down to stroke and changing the stroke method to anchored. This will give us one instance of the skull, which is what I'm looking for. And then the fall off section, I'm gonna go with sphere. I'm gonna turn off sculpting symmetry up here. And now when I click and drag on the sphere with my sculpt draw brush, you'll see our skull appear nice and crisp on our model. A great way to add detail to your sculpts quickly. You could obviously do this with all sorts of different objects like stitches, buttons, wrinkles, and fur to really take your sculpts to the next level. And that's it for this video. A couple quick shout outs. Shout out to Tyna3DS on Instagram for their awesome job on the bear tutorial, giving me milk chocolate vibes. I could see this in the window of a Purdy's. And shout out to Ode Souza on Instagram for also doing a great job on the bear tutorial with this, his first sculpt ever, giving me cookies and cream vibes. I think I might be in need of a dessert right about now. Great job to both of you guys. Thanks for the shout outs. If you'd like to be featured, give me a tag somewhere. I love seeing this stuff and sharing fun art in the 3D community. Feel free to ask questions below. I try and answer all of them and sometimes I actually help. If you want to share your art or ask a question, I have a little group on Facebook humming along. Link is below. Or you can just hit me up on social media somewhere. I have Twitter, Instagram, Discord, and Twitch as well. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I hope it helped, and see you in the next one.